Hi everyone, welcome to Ahmed Academy. In this video, we'll review 20 anatomical landmarks of the mandible with some information on the function of each area and muscle attachment. Towards the end of the video, we'll reveal some surprising facts about the mandibular bone, so stay tuned for that also. Before we begin, please consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more videos similar to this. Condyle process. This comprises of the head, neck and the pterygoid fovea and the head articulates with the glenoid fossa in the temporal bone. Pterygoid fovea. This lies on the anterior surface of the condylar head and its site for attachment of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Coronoid process. A triangular plate of bone that projects upwards and forwards slightly. The medial surface and the margins of the coronoid process are the sites of attachment for the temporalis muscle. Mandibular notch, also known as the coronoid notch, is a curved depression on the upper border of the lower jaw between the coronoid process and the condylar process. Ascending ramus. These are flat vertical projections that ascend from the obtuse angles of the body. They are quadrilateral and have four borders anterior, posterior, inferior and superior. Each has lateral and medial surfaces. Angle of ramus also known as the gonial angle. This is when the inferior border of the ascending ramus meets the base of the mandibular body at an obtuse angle. This region is termed the angle of the mandible or the gonial angle. This area provides attachment for the masseter on the outside and medial pterygoid on the medial surface and stylomandibular ligament posteriorly. Body. This is the bulk of bone anterior to the angle and ascending ramus. Alveolar ridge. This forms the superior margins of the body of the mandible into which the teeth insert. Oblique line. This line demarcates the junction of the alveolus and the ramus of the mandible. Masseteric tuberosity. This is a rough area for the attachment of the masseter muscle on the external surface of the gonial angle. Symphysis. Line of junction where the two lateral halves of the mandible typically fuse at an early period of life, normally around age of one or two. Mental protuberance. These are convexities either side of the midline depression at the base. Mylohyoid line. It is the site of attachment for the mylohyoid muscle as well as the pterygomandibular raphi being attached to the posterior section. Submandibular fossa. Concavity in the lingual part of the mandibular body inferior to the mylohyoid line in the lower molar region where part of the submandibular gland is situated. Mandibular foramen. A small opening that leads to the mandibular canal which travels obliquely downwards and forwards through the mandibular ramus to terminate as the mental foramen on the external surface of the mandibular body and it contains the inferior alveolar nerve. Lingula A triangular bony projection or ridge on the medial surface of the ascending ramus immediately superior to the mandibular foramen. It provides attachment for the sphenomandibular ligament. Mental foramen. Small opening that lies below the premolar teeth and is the opening of the mandibular canal. Transmits the mental nerve from the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Mental spine, also known as the genial tubercles, are bony projections located bilaterally around the lingual foramen on the lingual surface of the mandible giving attachment to geniohyoid inferiorly and genioglossus superiorly. Pterygoid tuberosity A rough area for the attachment of the medial pterygoid muscle on the internal surface of the gonial angle. Digastric fossa these are oval depressions for the attachment of the anterior belly of the digastric muscles and they are located below the mental spines on the internal surface of the mandible on either sides of the middle line. 
just want to say well done if you made it this far and i hope these 20 points that we covered was helpful surprising fact that i wanted to reveal about the mandible is that it's the largest strongest and lowest bone in the human facial skeleton and the only movable bone of the skull except the ossicles of the middle ear all the graphics that we used for this video, uh, the credit goes to the University of Dundee. Their links will also be found in the description section below. Thank you so much for watching once again. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video or benefited from it. And also consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one.